Welcome to Eric's workshop. And today's edition is the part two of the previous um, video, which is COVID-19, quarantine, and how it affects our mental health. So we're gonna continue from there. I'm gonna make it very brief so that those watching, you know, it's gonna be very interesting because when videos are long, the concentration span is really not good. So I'll make sure I do it brief, short, interesting, and informative. So I'll have a brief sort of summary of the previous video on the same topic, COVID-19 quarantine, and how it affects our mental health. We spoke a little bit about the onset and how the whole epidemiology of this disease started and all that. Um, I said it was in Wuhan as the um, conspiracy theorists will say. There's a whole lot of theories as I was saying um, the other time but there are no concrete sort of evidence to what is being said but we still have to go on and, and do what is right and make sure we contain this disease so that's not going to spread so that's not going to kill so many people. I started in Wuhan from the last video and it spread all over the world. So we spoke about generalized anxiety disorder and generalized anxiety disorder which is GAD is mainly an anxiety, the fear of any situation. People fear that they will fall ill. People fear that they will contract the disease. People fear that, you know, their parents will fall ill, their loved ones will fall ill. People fear that they will be out of jobs. Unemployment rate is rising high. Death rate is rising high due to the diseases. People are not exercising and therefore it's increasing, you know, the level of illness in our communities. Because if you don't exercise, you become very disorientated. You become weak. Your chemistry change. You can fall ill or you can put on weight. And you know obesity brings a whole lot of problems onto ourselves and especially individually when you're obese there's a whole lot of health risks that are involved so i think we spoke a whole lot of about how this generalized anxiety is affecting us because if you're anxious of something obviously you have a change of chemistry and when there's a change of chemistry it affects your whole being it affects most of your organs your kidneys, your liver, your heart, your pancreas, and even some of your hormones and your enzymes and all these tissues, tissues, sorry, tissues and all this biological stuff in our body doesn't really work well. And if it is not working well, it means it's going to affect you. So we today, I think we touched on pages 98 to 101 the other time on generalized anxiety disorder and we spoke about how it is diagnosed we have tools that we use in diagnosing the disease and it has to be a prolonged set of symptoms for over six months before you can be clinically diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. So that is a short recap of what we deliberated on the other time on that video. But today we're gonna to be touching on pages 102 and then 103. And after that, I'll give a brief um, description of what is going on. At the moment, I think we have almost about 1.2, um, million 
people that have been infected and we have about 388,482 I'm not really sort of um, sure about the but it's somewhere around deaths globally the global deaths so it's something that is really bothering the communities and um, we also heard that China has had a very you know um, severe sort of surge a very um, critical surge it's gone up again they've got sort of new cases that are coming in so it's really a bother now because it's, it's, it's like a ripple effect is going to run through the communities and then spread all over the world as well as it did and when it does like that it means the epidemiology um, sort of statistics have changed so if they ease up the containment strategy in terms of the lockdown, if it's being eased in a very graduated approach, then communities out there have to be careful on how to make sure that individually you protect yourself. Because now that there's a rise in infection rate in China, definitely it means that when there's an ease or an ease of the lockdown, it affects the population and therefore infection rates go up if infection rates go up then it means death rates is going to go up as well because now we don't have a sort of solid medication that really combats this disease i've heard that um one steroid i've forgotten the name in england they were you know talking about it BBC that they've got that medication and that medication has been in the system for quite a long time and it is really helping to save lives because as soon as you are in a ventilator or you are in a critically ill situation and they administer that medication it's saving lives and there's proof so right now we don't have specific medication for this COVID-19 they are trying to Get some antivirals they're trying to organize and do some clinical trials to make sure that something comes up very quickly so that we can all be saved if it's via um what is it called if it's via injections in terms of um vaccinations which is going to combat the rise of this disease they are doing clinical trials all over the world to make sure they come out with something so it has been a very uncertain period and the uncertainty level is really rising and it has therefore affected individually our mental state and everybody has a level of anxiety depending on that individual some are clinical, some are being able to manage it. They are being able to cope with it. They've got their own, developed their own coping mechanisms and strategies to deal with the current pandemic, pandemonium as I always put it, because it's been a chaos. It's been a chaos situation. It's been very chaotic. People are running to skelter to make sure um, they are safe. But at the moment, People are, they some have lost their job and they are on fellows and all that, and some are not even being paid. Some are taking their companies to court. It, there's a whole lot of things going on because the lockdown brought so many, you know, things in terms of anxieties into the communities. So it's been a very critical um, moment that we have to sort of think about. Sorry, I was setting my time. So today, without much ado, I'm going to pick on the um, chapters, um, the pages 102 to 103, so that we just get rid of it. And then we get prepared for our next video. 
So, we are going to treat just two topics today, 102, pages 102 and then 103. We were talking about phobia, phobia and then panic disorders. So let's first of all read about the phobia and see what, what, what phobia is all about. The single largest category of anxiety disorders is that of phobic disorders, which includes all cases in which fear and anxiety is triggered by a specific stimulus or situation. So it means that something triggers your brain that you will hit the level of panic the level of fear that you just don't want to it's like a mirage sometimes as i said in my last video you'll see water on the surface maybe on an asphalt road but when you get there it's not there so that fear grips your whole body your whole mind and it makes you feel very uncomfortable so it's called phobia the fear of something specific so individually everybody has got their own specific situation that brings about their panic that brings about their phobia that brings about their fear so for instance i've got a phobia of flying so mine is different yours might be different maybe flies mosquitoes or lizards every every individual has their own phobia and maybe people are not sort of transparent to tell you that oh this is my phobia and you know i don't like this or i don't like that so between five to twelve percent of the population worldwide suffer from phobic disorders so this five percent and 12 percent that suffers from you know the phobic disorders are clinically diagnosed so this, this is the statistics of the population so which means there are more this this you know some save through the net some get through the net without diagnosis so which means those that have been diagnosed is five to twelve percent of the population so these are clinical cases. They are not ordinary cases. They are cases that have been brought to the specialists, that have been brought to the hospital, that have been brought to the GPs, that have been brought to the surgeries, that have gone through clinical assessment and evaluation to come to this diagnosis. So which means those that haven't come through the system are not part of this statistics. So which means there are more out there. There are more people with phobic disorders that we haven't even known because they wouldn't allow themselves to be checked by professionals, by clinicians, by the multidisciplinary teams to make sure that they overcome their phobia. So sufferers typically, um, sorry, sufferers typically anticipate terrifying consequences from encountering the object of their fear which can be anything from an animal to a location to a bodily fluid to a particular situation so as i said individually everyone has their own specific phobia own specific issue own specific elements own specific substance own specific objects own specific type of fear that comes upon them so sufferers understand that their fear is not proportional to the actual potential danger but still are overwhelmed by the fear so you see this is something to talk about somebody might be there just like me, let me use myself as an example. The fear of flying, phobia of flying. I'll go through a whole lot of panic attacks, a whole lot of bodily, you know, alterations, changes in temperature, sweating here and there, you know, 
palpitation, headaches, and all that. But at the end of the day, I'm going to get to my destination because I'll be thinking about so many things. The fear of height, I fear height, and therefore flying is you know you you'll be high sometimes thirty seven thousand feet or thirty seven thousand altitude, which is very high, and even when you are descending, it, it drops and drops and drops. So you go through all that, and then at the end of the day, the plane lands, but nothing happened. But you were, your fear knocked you down in such a way that you thought something was going to happen to you. But at the end of the day, you, you flew from point A to point B. My daughter's fear flies. Ordinary butterflies and all these insects flying around. They'll be screaming and all that. You have to go and help them sort it out. I said, if we ain't around, how are you going to deal with this situation? You better get your acts right so that you deal with that situation there and then so that you overcome your phobia because if you don't overcome your phobia it's going to grow into something else that is when it gets to the clinical state it means you need professional advice or professional support because if you sit down there for your phobia to overcome you and you get diagnosed then it means you know you've 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 you've, you've been to a situation whereby you can't handle it you haven't got any coping mechanism, you haven't got any strategies to handle your phobia. So it's, it's individually different. Mr. A or Mrs. B will have a different phobic attack from Mr. B or Mrs. B. Somebody will fear driving, they don't want to go close to the driving seat that's a fear it's a phobia but then we have ways of weaning people like that from their phobia that's when it gets clinical it gets very worried and then you have to seek a professional advice which sometimes to if you are clinically diagnosed if it's to some extent maybe you need medication or if it's managed you have some sort of talking therapy that is going to get you through it and then you overcome your fear. But it's not easy, as I'm saying it, it's not easy because it's something that really bothers individuals. And as a matter of fact, I always say I'm going to use myself as an example because until I land from a plane, I'm very disorientated and very disturbed. So somebody might have a phobia of dogs. When they see dogs, they have panic attacks or they even run and hit something or they, they freak out or they even start having palpitations or headaches or sweating and all that. Individually, people react differently to phobias. And I believe that everybody has got a specific phobia. Sometimes you don't even realize that you've got that phobia until the time comes to face your fears. So it's not all people that even know that they are afraid of something, but unless that day happens, and then they will recognize that particular fear in their lives. So without wasting time, let's hit on the second one, panic disorder. With panic disorder, a person suffers from brief attacks of intense terror and apprehension. Apprehension is the same as fear. Often marked by trembling, you shake. Trembling, you tremble, it means you shake. Shaking, confusion, dizziness. Sometimes you get dizzy because you're overwhelmed and your chemistry changes. When your chemistry changes, it brings a whole lot of symptoms that are, some are physical and some are internal. So dizziness, nausea, some can even vomit, and or even breathing difficulties. So you see, from phobia, you come to panic attacks. So what is going to happen is, when there's a phobia, and you face your fear, and you think that is real, 
the symptoms of you fearing that object or that instance or that particular thing will bring upon that individual that panic attack and panic attack comes in different shapes and sizes so you see they've mentioned trembling shaking confusion dizziness nausea even difficulty in breathing some can't breathe so it means somebody with a phobic disorder can go through panic disorders so it's, it's linked you know all these deliberations that we're doing is, is all linked up because when you have generalized anxiety disorder and there's a fear you are anxious about something and you go through that phobic state obviously you will have the symptoms of panic attacks some individuals can't breathe they have breathing difficulties some even have nausea they can throw up some have dizziness you know they go deep dizzy and, and, and giddy they can't they can't really see things and they sometimes some even pass out